Hello and welcome to Manga Tour 96 and today we're going to talk about Arifureta Shokogyo the Seikai Saikyo. Today's topic will be the strength of the demon king Hajime, which he acquired after his fall into the abyss and his journey after clawing his way back out of it. Considering that the process of going from a useless synergist to a god slaying demon king was a long one with him needing to learn many things I decided to split this topic into two videos as there is much to cover and I won't be covering any artifacts that he created as this is a rabbit hole in of itself that deserves videos dedicated specifically for it. But before we start here's the spoiler warning I will be spoiling a lot of things in this video so if you don't want to be spoiled I would highly recommend that you go and read the light novel as it is an enjoyable read. For everyone else, let's start with how Hajime became this strong in the first place. In the Great Orcus Labyrinth, Hajime devours numerous powerful demonic beasts, manages to survive the little process due to the Ambrosia and his iron forged will. As a result, Hajime's constitution was mutated by the magic of the monsters, granting him a tremendously high status, even breaking past the level 100 limit. At the cost of his mutation, he will no longer be considered as a human and no longer be afraid at anything anymore. After continuously devouring many powerful demonic beasts and absorbing their powers, by the end of conquering the Orcus Labyrinth, Hajime gained tremendous superhuman physical power that is completely monstrous and inhuman. His base strength being 12 times far superior to Koki, who is the strongest hero, surpassing even Tio, the strongest dragon man in her dragon form, able to carry his oversight pal bunker or heavy artillery such as Orkan with little effort. Even without resorting to weapons, he can overpower the strongest humans, beastmen and monsters with pure physical might. Blocking a zombie fight melts swordsmanship who was the strongest knight of Highly Kingdom with only one finger. Throwing small harmless objects such as sugar cubes with extreme force to knock down knights. When using his true powers, Hajime can easily break bones and strike with enough force to rupture his enemy's internal organs, even humans who were blessed by Echt with enhanced physical power. Such as when Hajime broke almost all of Hyama's bones and damaged his internal organs severely as he brutally beat Hyama up and gripped his neck to leave the latter with only one hand with no effort. In the Schnell Labyrinth, Hajime easily overpowered a limit break enhanced Koki without even using his full strength, bypassing the enhanced protection of Koki's limit break enhanced durability. Physical resistance skills and divine armor, which is the strongest armor type artifact, sending him crashing into an icy wall with one kick, pulverizing it and defeating him without sustaining injuries or effort when brutalizing the so-called chosen hero. After killing Echt and his servant Alwa, Hajime now holds the power to kill gods or immortal beings with his newly reputation as the god slaying demon king. He can easily defeat weaker enemies with just one hit even large numbers such as Yaigashi family's dojo students and bully the soul sisters both groups who are annoying to his wife Shizuko Yaigashi. Hajime has carried anyone without even getting exhausted when carrying Yue and Shizuko while she was asleep. His strength has no equal as he is undefeated and never lost to anyone as well being the strongest and not even Koke can defeat Hajime or surpass him either. Hajime can also break normal swords, shields, spares and armor with his bare hands as he broke Kondo's spear and both Melt and Hyama's swords. No matter how his enemies were strong or durable, Hajime can bypass his enemy's defenses ability and defeating them effortlessly, as he did in his second fight against Koki. According to Acht, Hajime is far too powerful than she expected when killing Noit. His strength is too powerful when he broke from spells including the Holy Church's powerful spell when they intervene in his fight with Noit as he brutalized them effortlessly. He has also gained superhuman physical durability, capable of withstanding attacks that will prove fatal for most people. His durability is at least 12 times tougher than Ryotaro Sakagami's. 
he didn't receive any sort of injuries from feeble attacks such as Katlea's most powerful attack, Koki's strongest attack and Hiyama's fireball as his body acts like her armor and he felt nothing but annoyance to him from those weak attacks, even attacks are not strong enough hurting him. When using his defensive abilities, Hajime's body became strong enough to handle attacks from one of God's apostles while only receiving minor injuries which only nicked him a little. Even when Frit ambushed him while he got his guard down, it wasn't enough to kill Hajime and he's still able to fight with his injuries. Due to his countless brutal experience in the Orcus Labyrinth, from the agony of consuming monsters to withstand numerous life-threatening injuries from fighting all the powerful monsters, Hajime has attained tremendous tolerance to grievous pain. Augmented with his mystical mutation, vitality and defense status, Hajime can withstand most attacks with only minimal discomfort. After continuously devouring many powerful monsters throughout Orcus Dungeon, Hajime's mana developed to extreme powerful and massive levels, far surpassing Atavis such as Yue, Shia and Tio, all of whom have powerful mana themselves. His original sky blue mana changed to crimson color. When he releases his mana, it's powerful enough to block the immense mana pressure released from Noint, a god apostle protecting Aiko who was about to fall unconscious. When in rage, he was able to cast all his classmates who had overpowered cheat abilities to freeze in sheer terror. His mana capacity and regeneration are vast enough for him to operate the Fenrir flying craft which consumes an immense amount of mana to travel between locations. While his intellectual abilities in academic studies is average, Hajime has proven himself to be an extremely clever genius in engineering. He has immense scientific knowledge which was self taught from manga, anime, movies and video games. His intuition is also extremely accurate and spot on as he was able to correctly deduce that one of his classmates is purposely responsible for the apparent misfire fireball that led to his fall into the depths of the Orcus dungeon and the reason being jealousy towards Kauri who was in love towards him and would also commit any horrific atrocities to force Kauri to become his sex slave when Hajime warned Aiko about it. He would later be proven correct when Hima had assisted Eri in massacring and zombifying all the knights of the Highly Kingdom and also the death trap for their classmates and even murdered Kauri herself in order to make her his personal undead sex slave. A fact which even the extremely sharp-minded Shizuko had noticed only when it was too late. Hajime was also the first to notice that the human and demons of Tortoise were actually worshipping the same evil god Echt, who is actually posing as two different gods in order to manipulate the two races into fighting and killing each other for millennia after learning about Echt's colors, a party toward the destruction of the Highly Kingdom who were supposed to be his most faithful worshippers. This will be proven when Hajime succeeded in slaying Noint and stopping Fritz's invasion of the Highly Kingdom. Echt sent 500 Apostle to support the demons as reinforcement to not completely annihilate the humans who were Echt's worshippers but also to eliminate Hajime. He has also shown to be an actual judge of character as he noticed the real reason why Tio joined his party was because she was hoping to use him in her revenge against the gods something that the others only realized after she confessed it herself. Hajime also chose to confide in his teacher Aiko about the true reason of his refusal to rejoin them by telling her the secret he learned from Oscar about Ech true nature as a twisted evil god as he fully understands that Aiko, who is extremely devoted to her students, will absolutely believe his words as he is also one of her students whom she prioritized above all else and later Kaori since she held immense love towards him. When Koki questioned why he had not told them about Ech's true nature earlier when they were reunited in the Orcus dungeon, Hajime stated that Koki would never want to believe him by pointing out his misguided sense of justice, inability to differentiate between good and evil and most of all his habit of conventionally twisting and interpreting things to fit his worldview and will even get angry at him for seemingly slandering the god who had chosen him to be the hero. A statement which even Koki himself could not deny. 
Hajime is also an extremely resourceful, innovative innovator, combining his scientific knowledge learned from countless manga, anime and movies with his transportation skill to create various powerful techno-magical weapons and other advanced magic power machinery similar to Earth's modern military technology as well as science fiction technology. He has shown to be an extraordinarily talented firearm designer, having managed to make firearms and artillery with unique customizations such as a donor and schlag break action revolvers, designed for mid-air reloading, customized with makeshift swing-out cylinders to incorporate the great firepowers of swing-out revolvers, incorporating shotgun into Oscar's magical protestic arm artifact as well as Shia's juke and war hammer, modified the new Schlagen anti-material rifle to function as a sniper rifle by mounting a telescope scope to shoot from long distances, designed metal zai as a handle portable Gatling gun. Hajime is also a self-taught genius in vehicle engineering, having designed Stife motorcycle, Breeze pickup truck and submarine and most of all Fenrir airship. He has also trained in his craftsmanship as a synergist to utmost perfection due to his earliest attempts to create modern firearms which are extremely difficult to create in comparison to swords and armors eventually succeeded after countless trial and error. With unrivaled precision and dexterity in his craftsmanship, Hajime became an outstanding master gunsmith. Combined with the Age of God's creation magic, Hajime can create techno-magical artillery to tremendous power. In addition to guns, Hajime can also apply his skills into crafting melee weapons of the highest quality, including refining them to be much more powerful as well as perfectly repair ancient artifacts. His masterpieces as a synergist include his signature revolvers Donner and Schlag, Shizuku's Black Katana, Shia's Juke and Warhammer and Suzu Staniguchi's Tessin Folding Fans. He is currently considered the best craftsman on Tortoise, so much that all of the Highly Kingdom finest synergists, including Volpen, wanted Hajime to accept them as his apprentices after praising his craftsmanship in Shizuku's Black Blade Katana and perfectly restoring the Holy Kingdom's barrier artifact in a matter of seconds. He is also an extremely pragmatic tactician, relying on orthodox yet extraordinary strategies allowing him to outsmart most enemies, including the god Apostle Noint. He managed to expose the truth that had most humans to turn against the god Echt, which succeeded with the help of his teacher Aiko and Princess Liliane. Before his transformation, Hajime made cunning uses of his transmute ability to first immobilize his target before killing it, something that impressed the knights who didn't expect him to be so much of help at the time. This tactic worked even in the true Orcus Labyrinth, where the monsters were stronger and weren't weakened by so on beforehand. During the battle against the Behemoth, Hajime was able to quickly figure out a way to hold it back so his classmates could launch a barrage of attacks against it, which mostly worked if it wasn't for Hiyama trying to kill him. Hajime is good at taking advantage of his environment to his advantage as he often used the terrain to ricochet his bullets so they can hit enemies who are dodging. During his battle with a doppelganger in Hans Koki, he was capable of taking advantage of Koki's collapsed mentality state which left his attacks predictable to easily overwhelm him. With this, I covered everything that I wanted to cover on Hajime's strength in this first video. And that will be all for this video. If you like this video, leave a like, leave your thoughts in the comments below or subscribe to the channel for more manga reviews and One Piece content. And until next time, take care.